Hey, everybody. Welcome back to an edition of Listography. I am Ryan coming in from Chicago, and with me, as always, is Joe coming in from Pittsburgh. And today we are tackling the listography of yeah, Metallica. <laughs> First things first, you're probably going to notice it's just me and Joe right now. Um, no Jason. This is the first video in the history of this channel that we're going to rank some albums without Jason. He started the channel a couple of years ago, but he's taking the week off to get some things taken care of. Um, coincidentally, it is during Metallica week. Uh, not a coincidence. He's not a big Metallica fan. But we want to say thank you very much, Jason, for all of your hard work. Um, and we hope to see you again for the Eagles listography, which will be coming up after this one. A um, couple of quick housekeeping notes before we get into the top 10 of Metallica. Um, we're not going to be doing Lulu, Garage Inc., anything like that. Maybe in the future for some artists, we will kind of include rarities and B-sides, but this is not one of those cases. Joe! Metallica, what do they mean to you? Uh, Metallica, I've liked them for a long time. The first time I ever performed on a stage was playing For Whom the Bell Tolls. This was back in, I think, 2004 or five. This was actually right around Apocalyptica was big. If you remember them, they played cello and they covered a lot of metal songs, Metallica included. So I actually played bass and my friend Gloria played the cello and we played For Whom the Bell Tolls. And that was right around the time I started getting into them. I really liked the kind of progressive elements. Obviously I'd heard, you know, the Black Album, Load, Reload, a lot of the singles that they play on the radio, but it wasn't until about, you know, high school where I really started getting into the older stuff, kind of didn't really know that's what they sounded like. I was kind of only picturing the Black Album version sort of almost southern rock element that they introduced in in load and reload but you know i really liked them back then and i continue to like them you know they're, they're still one of my top 100 favorite bands maybe not quite as into them as i used to be but this kind of you know re-listening to all the albums really kind of brought back some some cool memories of the songs that i really liked from them, particularly the old stuff. Well, for me, you know, same thing. I got into it when Black Album and Load and Reload were getting big and they got a lot of radio play on hard rock stations. I like Metallica a little bit. I'm very cautious with saying that. I'm not a huge metalhead, but I do like it from time to time when the mood strikes. I tend to lead more towards, I like Slayer and Lamb of God a little the more heavier evil stuff um that said <laughs> there's going to be definitely some certain tendencies with my list um and let's get right to the listography of metallica joe what do you got bringing up the rear number 10 all right number 10 and i think this is probably what most metallica fans would say and that is saint anger um this was their i mean it, i guess this was during their sort of weird phase they saw they kind of broke up they were in you know therapy together and the album they made just doesn't work for me the the drum sounds are weird none of the classic elements that made me like metallica are present on this album you know there's no ex solos extended solos from uh hammett the songwriting is very sort of it's super intense it's not very melodic it's none of that kind of change up dynamic progressive elements that made me like Metallica. So this one's kind of just like, I just, I just can't get into it. I don't think most Metallica fans can, and I don't like it. I don't want to listen to it ever again. My number 10 is going to be Master of, no, I'm kidding. It's Saint Anger. Um, you're being too nice. Saint Anger is really bad. Um, the drum sound, yeah, I don't know if he's playing it with a hammer inside of a dumpster and the snare drum's made out of a tuna fish can, um, but it sounds bad. And you know, the guitars don't sound very good either. Very fuzzy and buzzy. Thing I hate most about this album, and I am very comfortable using the word hate, are some of the lyrics and the singing style. He's trying to do like this cool laid back grunge style, but the lyrics are this really overly cute and cheeky, just trite garbage. Some of the rhymes on this are so forth. The Uninvisible Kid, it is really rough. Mm -hmm. Some of the just really, it, it's just really bad. And I'm trying to be positive and less cynical about them. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. Number 10, Sane Anger, very bad. I gotta say, I didn't hate it as much as I did the first time. 
I still hate the singles that they released from the band or from the album. And I can't even recall what they are. The ones that were on the radio for about 10 seconds, St. Anger, Frantic. I think those are the worst ones. There's some kind of weird, decent ones towards the end. Yeah, nothing nothing I'd ever want to really get back into. Agreed. What do you got for number nine? Uh, my number nine is going to be Death Magnetic. And this was their comeback in 2008. So it was five years after St. Anger. It's heading in the right direction for me. There's a couple songs I liked on it. Uh, the Day Never Comes, Cyanide's All Right. But it's... This is one of the weird ones. It was so loud that there's actual clipping on some of the the music. It's and you can really hear it on the album. It's it's odd. Um, it's a little bit of a return to the the prog year elements, but it's probably closer to like Black Album, which is kind of it's it's a band that's trying to get back to their glory days, but just doesn't quite make it. My number nine is going to be Reload. There's some decent tracks on this um i like fuel i kind of like slither i've never really liked memory remains i compared to load i do think it's a little sim more si simpler and heavier um but the whole thing's just so slow it's really hard to sit through the entire thing there's no thrash to it a lot of it's way too simple even though i like that it's starting to simplify a little more um some of the stuff sounds like it should be stained rather than metallica it's just got that mid to late 90s boring grunge sound to me at times some really awful moments for me on it also um prince charming has an awful chorus um and that's the song's kind of metallica for me in a nutshell where i kind of like where their head's at and i like it up to a point and then something catastrophic comes out of nowhere and i absolutely hate this song you know the hey ma look at me line in that song it's just it's so weak and soft for them. I never connect with Hatfield at all. He's my least favorite member of the group. I don't think he's a very good singer. You'll see the tendency in my list are going to be the albums where I can tolerate him the most or some of the albums that I like the most. Um, so number nine for me is Reload. Yeah, I, I can't really disagree with, with that one. That's, that's pretty much spot on. Reload makes a appearance pretty soon on my list too. But not yet. Uh, my number eight is gonna be Hardwired to Self-Destruct. And I don't know, I liked this album when I first heard it, when it first came out. And then my subsequent listen this time doing these lists, it just didn't, nothing stuck with me. I like some of the songs and maybe I have a little higher because Metallica, I like them a little bit more. So I, I hold the, maybe the songwriting in a higher regard. But again, it, it kind of harkens back to their old sound. It's another kind of trying to bring it back maybe to more of the Ride the Lightning and Justice for All days. The songs aren't bad. Now That We're Dead, Moth into Flame, Halo and Fire, Confusion are all kind of, they're, it's on the right path and I, I like them, but I just, I don't know, it didn't quite connect with me. For number eight for me, I've got Load. This is their weird cowboy southern rock album I, I don't know it's it's got a lot of weird elements to it that i really like this era of them in theory but i just can't get through the albums without being really disappointed without being bored or even kind of grimacing at how how much you know i hate to say it but there's some stuff i just really think is bad bleeding me cure are really awful i think the second half is bad the first half of the album isn't too bad the main reason i've got it over reload is because of hero of the day and until it sleeps I do dig that song, but by this point in Metallica, you're you're used to the thrash and to the speed. You know, Black Album was it's you know was something different, but now it feels like you know you're running with Metallica, and and all of a sudden your feet are just stuck in the mud. It, it doesn't have any spark or anything like you were saying about Saint Anger. There's none of the things you really like about Metallica on this album. I I don't think it's there. His voice is too forward in the mix for me. You know, the more we get the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's too much for me. This is a pass for me. It's number eight. Okay. Uh, let's, let's go to number seven then. My number seven is going to be Reload. I obviously didn't like, dislike as much as you. I, I like it. This is probably, is this, between this, Hardwired and Death Magnetic, you'd probably put them in any order. Like, it's not like a hard, you know, distance for me. Uh, between those three. I think Reload's definitely their weakest of sort of the, the 90s, their second classic period or whatever. Why this one's a little higher on my list, I love Fuel, even though I'm 
very much against the idea of a sequel song. I do like The Unforgiven 2. I think it's, if they'd named it something else, it probably would have been a little more better received. But I think you're right. There's too much of that like cowboy Southern rock, but it's it's really slow. Like they they totally kind of forgotten what made Metallica Metallica, which is you know the speed. A lot of the songs drag on for way too long. You know you have these six and seven minute songs that could have been three minutes. There's there's no part in that six minutes where it's like oh I really needed to hear this little section of music. And yeah, the, the album drags. It's just not not a great listen. The first half's pretty decent, but yeah, it, it's not great. It seems like the big fifty fifty checkpoint for us is going to be we like the old stuff a lot more than the new stuff so far as our list. Are going. And there is something to be said about wanting to um, evolve and develop a new sound or whatever. So I applaud them for that, but it's a lot of it's not working for me. My number seven is going to be Hardwired to Self Destruction. Um, I like this more than Load and Reload uh, because I think it's a little more relaxed and focused. Um, I love the first two songs with um, Atlas Rise and Hardwired. Moth into Flames, good. It sounds more like 80s Metallica. They're getting more um, to their roots. Um, you know, it almost sounds like it could have been a very weak follow up to um, Injustice for All. But, you know, it doesn't have that spark, doesn't have the fire and the punch that we want. Nothing's that memorable on it. Um, I do think it, you know, like I said, got more focus to it. Maybe that's because James was really happy the Sharks were going to the Stanley Cup while they recorded it. And we all know as diehard Pittsburgh Penguin fans how that turned out. But I don't think this is a very exciting album, but I do like it considerably more than my bottom three. So number seven for me is going to be Hardwired to Self-Destruct. All right, uh, we're on to number six. For me, that's going to be Load. Kind of what you already said about it. I think I like the the singles better than you did. Really like Hero of the Day. King Nothing, Until It Sleeps are really kind of in that black album vein. I think they work pretty well. I like the opener, Ain't My Bitch, 2 by 4 The House of Jack Bill. I think the first half is, is really solid. Again, it's probably, the whole album's probably about 20 minutes too long. They could have cut off probably four or five songs. I think it would be a lot tighter. Uh, lose some of, uh, you know, it just, it fades. The momentum fades from those opening kind of, you know, solid Metallica songs. And then it's just kind of filler. After that, uh, the Outlaw Torn's okay, but again, it's nine minutes and 50 seconds. It could have been four minutes long, so. I was really surprised when I was reading um, the um, reaction to this album from the band that they really liked um, uh, Torn, what, what is it called, Torn Apart? Or the last uh, song. Again. The Outlaw Torn. Outlaw Torn, yeah. They really liked that song, and I found that song to be very unbearable. My number six is going to be Death Magnetic. I liked this from start to finish the most of my bottom albums. Um, they've dropped most of the experimentation, although with Unforgiven 3, I do think this might be the first time we hear piano at all on a Metallica album, which is kind of cool to hear. I'm not crazy about how some of the lyrics have like this rapid fire style to it, but I really like how Hammett and Lars are playing together here. It's a little looser, more just kind of straight up rock beats and rock riffs that are playing off one another. It's got, also got that dreamy guitar tone from the 80s back a little bit, um, which hadn't really been on the previous albums. I like The Day That Never Comes. I like Broken Beat Scarred. Um, and I think it closes well with Suicide and Redemption My Apocalypse. There's just still no doom, no power. It, you know, the, the metal's gone. So this comes in at number six for me, Death Magnetic. And then my number five on up are the only albums I really recommend for Metallica. Um, so only half their catalog is stuff that I like. But take it away with your top five. All right, we got at number five. I'm going to go with the Black Album. I like it a lot. I'll say that. But I think it's a distinct step down as far as their, you know, discography goes. You got the slicker sound. Uh, I believe it was Bob Rock came in, kind of pushed them to simplify, drop some of the proggy elements, which, I mean, it makes sense because Injustice for All was so kind of like bleak and not radio friendly. It was kind of like, where do they go from here? So they decided to kind of completely reinvent themselves. And it's it's not complete reinvention because the songs are still long. They're still five minutes long, but you lose some of those long extended, you know, guitar solos. The progressive elements are pretty much gone. Um, I think Hetfield sounds pretty good though. Hammett's solos are really nice especially on stuff like Nothing Else Matters, Enter Sandman, Unforgiven, Wherever I May Roam. I think, you know, Hammett really kind of comes to the forefront, sort of, you know, 
they reduced the, the time of the solos, but he has some nice, you know, ra more radio friendly solos, I guess. Um, very clear, concise, add a little symphonic touches. I think maybe the album sounds a little bit too similar throughout is other than maybe nothing else matters everything kind of has that same beat but i think the, the songwriting holds up pretty well here and i still think it's a it's a good album even if it may divide metallica fans my number five is going to be and justice for all it was in contention for the number four spot it's a tough one for me to place it is my favorite lyrical album i love the themes of you know, politics and environmental, like, imprisonment. And I think it sounds really good, even though there's kind of another weird drum noise, not nearly as noticeable as St. Anger, but the snare sounds more like he's beating, uh, you know, a slab of beef in a butcher shop rather than hitting a snare drum. It's really thick and meaty, and I don't dig it, although I do like his playing on it. That said, I do think Lars is a bit of an overrated drummer. I'm not crazy about him. I appreciate what he does, but I know some people that think he's one of the all-time greats, and I just don't see that. I love the first part of this album, Blackened, um, the title track, Eye of the Beholder. This would be higher if the second half of the album um, held up to the first half. It just doesn't. And that's the only reason why it doesn't take a higher spot. But I do think it's a good album. I recommend it, especially for the first three songs. Um, so Injustice for All, number five for me. All right, well, let's continue with Injustice for All because that's my number four. I like it a lot. It has one of my favorite songs of all time, which is One. I think it's one of the best kind of anti-war songs of all time really sort of captures war i think in a song better than maybe any other song in music history but this album is so just unrelentingly bleak kind of all the way through i like what you said about you know the lyrical content's great it's very kind of forward and progressive and you know it, it hits on justice in war and sort of you know some of the themes that they were already touching on but i think they sort of uh, a little more eloquent with it on Injustice for All. My biggest problem with this one is basically they cut out the bass. This was right, um, this was between, this is after Cliff Burton died and right when they brought on Jason Newstead. And there's a lot of, you know, nobody, I guess nobody really knows why, but Petfield and Ulrich were basically like just turn him all the way down in the mix. So when you're listening to this song, I mean, I try as hard as I can to hear the bass and you really can't. It, it lends itself to an interesting sound, but I wish there was bass there, you know, it's it's different. It sounds kind of unique, but I think it would be better with an actual you know, bass track on it. I like the mix because the way they compose their music, the bass isn't rarely doing stuff different than the guitars anyway. And speaking of one, when I was going through their albums, I really started to notice how many of their hits I really don't care for. I'm not big on one. I'm really big on Fade to Black, Wherever I Roam, or um, Anywhere I Roam, and um, Memory Remains. A lot of these songs that you hear on the radio, I don't care for. And that's going to bring me to my number four, their most radio-friendly album, Black. And, you know, the best thing you can say about this is they were popularizing metal up until now, and then this really went over the top of that. You know, a lot of diehard metal fans hate that about about them, um, but I do respect it. I agree with pretty much everything you're saying about the Black Album. I did think this was going to be my number one when I was thinking. That said, I don't think about Metallica that often, so it was kind of just a brush off the shoulder. Oh, Black's probably going to land on my number one. It's the one I remember most growing up, but it doesn't really hold a candle to my top three. Sa Enter Sandman's okay. I do like Holier Than Now, Unforgiven, Nothing Else Matters a good bit, and I like the direction, but I do miss the thrash. I miss the speed. I appreciate that they're really carefully constructing the songs a little more, but with the epics gone and the progressiveness gone. It's more just like a hard rock album that's dipped into some metal batter. And I like it, but I don't really like it. So number four for me is self-titled, The Black Album. All right, well, we're entering the top three and it looks like we're gonna have the exact same top three. Might not be in the same order, but it looks like our three favorites are gonna be the same. For me, my number three is Kill 'Em All. This is their debut all the way back in 1983. And it's, it's really good. I liked it a, even more than I thought I did. On a on a the re-listen, it's just so fast. It's thrashy. It's a little punk even. You can sort of hear the influence of Dave Mustaine on it since he was. I think he has some songwriting credits on the album. I can't remember exactly which ones. Maybe Motor Breath or Four Horsemen. Apparently, he did write some of the songs, but he never recorded any of them. Right. Right. Yeah. 
but it, it, it kind of has that, you know, distinct thrash sound. Uh, it's thrash, brash, it's fast, it's still technically precise. Some of the, the, not as many solos, you know, Hammett really didn't come to the forefront yet. I really like Cliff Burton's uh, bass solo song, basically, Anesthesia, Pulling Teeth. That, as, a, as a young bassist growing up, that really spoke to me that he had his his own song, basically, where it's his solo bass. That was cool. I think the songwriting, it's a little, the lyrics are a little silly sometimes, but, it, you know, the, the whole album just has this kind of momentum and speed and power that I think really works well. Even if maybe the individual songs, you know, they don't appear on my list of favorites quite as much as maybe uh, the other two albums in my top three. I think it's just a really, there's not really any weak tracks on it for me. I don't know if I agree that the lyrics are silly. I do think they're a bit juvenile. Um, That's a better word, I'll be honest, yeah. That is partly why what I really like about Kill 'Em All, which is why it's not at number three and Ride the Lightning is. Um, but this is a really good album. I like Kill 'Em All a little more. With Ride the Lightning, you've got some really cool new guitar tones compared to Kill 'Em All. There's more force and more thunder in that guitar to tone, that sort of cosmic high end soaring guitar. Hammett does that so well. And James, the whole album sounds like it's coming from the heavens. Well, you know, it's got like a Norse guard feel to Norse god feel to it. Love the energy. I love that it ends with um, Call of Cthulhu. There's not a song on it I don't really like. Fade to Black is probably my least favorite because I think it's a little boring. It gets a little bit too dumbed down in the middle with that. And I don't care for a lot of the imagery in Trapped Under Ice. I would have much rather had Escape in the five spot behind Fade to Black um, just to kind of get the tempo back up a little sooner. Um, Escape, you know, Ride the Lightning. I love all these songs. Not, like I said, not really a bad song on it. Fade to Black is my least favorite, but I don't hate it. Um, so number three, Ride the Lightning. You know, a must have if you're into classic metal. And it is my number two, uh, Ride the Lightning. I think right from the, the beginning, you can kind of see the, you know, they signal the, the shift maybe in dynamics a little bit with the, the classic guitar intro on Fight Fire with Fire. So you can kind of tell, okay, maybe they're going to be a little more progressive. They're bringing in classical guitar. Probably not what people expected to hear after the thrash of Kill 'Em All. And I think from there, it gets back into, you know, that thrashy, hard, you know, riff just everywhere, riffs everywhere, guitar solos everywhere. I think Hammett really does some of his best work. And I think it's Fade of Black, For Whom the Bell Tolls, Ride the Lightning. You know, they're not wild, you know, if you heard them on the radio, I don't think they're, they'd be too out of place. Other than Call of Cthulhu, which is a instrumental anyway, the songs are a little shorter than maybe on Master of Puppets and Justice for All. You know, it, it's not too wildly progressive, um, but I think they get the dynamics really well, the, the fast, slow. I think the songwriting kind of delves into deeper themes, especially on like Ride the Lightning, mm -hmm. which is about, you know, dude getting electrocuted in an electric chair and from the perspective of the guy getting electrocuted, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, it's just a really good album all the way through. I think it probably is the most consistently good Metallica album. Well, you're right about one thing. Electrocution is cool. Uh, <laughs> my number two is going to be Kill 'Em All. Um, to me, James never sounded better than on this album, which is to say he sounds all right. Um, the mix on him is a little faint and a little distant, a little more reverb. It's got that really nice early 80s metal sound to it, which I really like. It's a little thinner than how those sort of albums were being, uh, not just by them, but, you know, the more we got into the late 80s and earlier 90s, it got heavier and thicker, and I like it. Um, you're right, it is a lot more of a punk influence. It has a little bit of misfits to it, a little bit of thrash, kind of has like that more underground club vibe to it. I really love all of the youthful energy of it. Um, with the thrash, it's very, it's like a really young battle cry, um, really triumphant. Um, love those punk tempos on it. Whiplash is awesome. Seek and Destroy is, you know, a great riff and Hit the Lights, Four Horsemen. Love the bass on Motor Breath. Can't believe you didn't mention that. And that's one of the only times where the bass really um, stood out to me in any album. This is the album that I was surprised to like as much as I did. I uh, I gave everything one listen, mostly everything two listens. Uh, the albums that I know the best, like Black Album, Master of Puppets, I didn't go back a second time because I know them all pretty well. But this I've listened to three times. The third time, not for this video, but just for pleasure. I really dug it. Um, so this was a very pleasant surprise. My favorite part about doing this list was discovering how much I liked Kill 'Em All at the number two spot.
And it seems like ding, 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 ding. No surprise. We are going to have the same number one. And before you talk about it, we are going to have to weigh in with Jason to see if it's the trifecta agreement of a number one. But number one for you, Joe, what do we got? Well, it's the last one left, so it has to be Master of Puppets. I think this is their magnum opus. I think they've kind of taken everything they learned on the first two albums and kind of applied it into one sort of just perfect storm of speed. Uh, it's so heavy. Uh, just from the opener, battery, Master of Puppets, the thing that should not be, hits you over the head, basically, uh, with the riffs, the speed of, of Hammett and um, Hetfield's guitar. You know, the guitars sound great. The songwriting, I think, takes another step forward. It's epic. It's progressive. It's dynamic. Kind of hits on all the things that I'm looking for in metal kind of in one great, you know, succinct, not succinct, not so succinct package. And I think Welcome Home Sanitarium is a nice break. It kind of comes right at the right time. I think it's sort of an improvement on Fade to Black as far as the guitar work of Hammett. I think it sounds incredible, his solos just so precise and musical, and it kind of works with the thrash before it, it kind of brings it all together. Uh, the second half isn't quite as strong, but I think Orion's their best instrumental that they ever did, and Damage Inc. is a good way to kind of close out the album with another, just hit you over the head just with a sledgehammer kind of song. Master of Puppets, also my number one. I got a lot of notes on it right here, but I really love everything you had to say about it. Um, the master opus, man, you hit the nail on the head with that. It is just this complete grand symphony of metal. It sounds so deep. And uh, you're right, Welcome Home Sanitarium, big improvement on Fade to Black. And even, you know, in moments like that, when it gets a little slower, um, it's still intense. I love how intense the whole album is. The thrash is never better. The technical skill, the precision is so good with all the crashes and crunches that they're, you know, putting in, you know, cramming into a phone booth in a tight space, um, Battery and Master of Puppets, Leopard Messiah, Orion has amazing production on it. Not a bad song. Um, I think this, if you've never gotten into metal and you want to try, this is probably the album to start. You know, this or Best of Scorpions. Um, <laughs> but Master of Puppets, I had a feeling that we were going to agree on number one. Congratulations. I think we're going to have to weigh in with Jason so we can get an official listography. Triple Crown win on it. Hey guys, Jason here. Look, I did my best not to talk about Metallica this week, but apparently the rule is that if the two people doing the episode agree on the number one, then the third person has to weigh in to see if it's a trifecta. So if I have to choose a favorite Metallica album, I'm gonna go with Kill 'em All. Sorry, you guys. Back to you. Any closing thoughts on Metallica's album? Album discography, excuse me. I think maybe listening to them again kind of really emphasized in my mind their place sort of in, in music and metal history. I kind of forgot how much I liked Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, and Justice for All, kind of that trifecta of progressive heavy metal, whatever you want to call it. And I kind of was a little disappointed maybe with their 90s output, but I think, I think they're still one of my all-time favorites probably. Probably just based on the three, maybe classic, four classic 80s albums. Yeah, pretty similar in general, our lists, um, you know, tinkering here and there, but the overall idea was the same. So thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. Let us know what you thought of our Metallica listography. Um, comment below, hit the bell, get the alerts, subscribe and like. We got a couple more Metallica volumes coming now. We're going to be doing our top 10 songs and then a fun wild card list. Thank you again for tuning in and we will see you next time on Listography. Thank you.